Coverage all across the country. Josina Anderson with the Ravens did something for the first time ever. Dan Graziano with the Saints trying to keep first seed hopes alive. And also Jeremy Fowler with the Jets did a little damage to the Pittsburgh Steelers playoff hopes. So with that, we say welcome to another edition of SportsCenter. Zubin Mahinty. This, of course, is Tim Hausback. I'm Michael Lee. Jeff Saturday will join us a little bit later. But as we saw yesterday with the three games we had on Saturday, so many implications on the line. And that was the same case today as well, Zubin. No question for New Orleans and Tennessee with a little history mixed in. Tim, let's get you set to go. The former QB waxing poetic on the game's best wide receiver. More on that in a second. Michael said it. Saints, Titans, plenty on the line. Alvin Kamara hasn't in the season many thought, Tim, but he busted out today. He did. He had a good day, and it really started in the second half here with the guys up front untouched. Really no excuse by the Titans. 80 on the ground, a couple touches. Saints pushed the lead to double digits. Later in the third, Tannehill coming to life to Sharp. We got ourselves a ball game. Three-point game after... That scramble and looking for room. It's an outstanding play by Ryan Tannehill. It's basically backyard football. Buys a little time, sharp, adjusts form, and finds Pater. Fourth quarter, here's where we mentioned history. Drew Brees to Michael Thomas, and this is going to set the record for the most receptions in a single season in league history. Tim, what is there to say about that one? I mean, just look at the 144 catches. And then the route he ran to get open for that was just filthy, so fitting. Yeah, stop just short there. Saints would end up cashing it in later in the drive. They win 38-28. Smiles all abound. A dozen catches, buck 36, 144 at that mark when he set the mark, as Tim said. What else is there to say? Sean Payton and company knew they'd have to pay Michael Thomas a ton of money. They did. And the Saints and Sean Payton are winners again. Their 12th of the season. It's good to get a win. Uh, be it we started off slow. We struggled in a lot of areas to start the game, and uh, it was frustrating. I thought defensively after those two touchdown drives, I thought you know, we really uh, did a few things to get that momentum shifted, and then special teams gave us some great returns today, and then offensively we finally got going. And so now the real issue on the other side is the Titans playoff scenario. So right now the sixth seed in the AFC, but as I'm sure most of you know, the Steelers lost today, meaning that if the Titans can essentially win their last regular season game, which will be against Houston, who clinched the AFC South on Saturday, who knows exactly who the Texans might play, the Titans would secure the sixth and final spot in the AFC. Plenty of playoff implications at stake where our Dan Graziano is standing. But first, I don't want to say this in any way other than the way it needs to be said. Get me up to speed on more history for the player at the wide receiver position that's out to the best start in NFL history. Zubin, just another ho-hum 12 catches for Michael Thomas of the Saints today, which puts him at 145 for the season and breaks the single-season record set by the Colts' Marvin Harrison in 2002. Michael was kind enough when the game was over to stop and talk to us about it. Uh, it's just a bless blessing ultimately to be in that position, um, to accomplish something like that, accomplish it with a win, um, and just to be able – to, to do that. It's humbling and it's a blessing, but we still have more to go. Personally, what do you, what do you credit for the success you've had in this league at such a young age? Um, my teammates, the whole Saints organization, from front, front office to, to anyone, to the people that clean up the buildings. Um, they trusted me, they believe in me. Um, my coaches, they put me in position to make a lot of key plays for this offense, and I take a lot of pride in that. Um, and we have big goals, so when your numbers call, you have to do your job and do it at a high level. I heard Cam Jordan in the locker room tell you, go put that record next week where nobody can touch it. How, how far do you think you can take it? Uh, just whatever the coach calls in the huddle, um, whatever Drew calls and whatever he needs me to be um, at the right place at the right time to make a big play. I'm not really, you know, I'm just trying to catch as many passes come my way. Thank you, Michael. Congratulations. You heard him talk about big goals. The Saints have already clinched their playoff spot, but they're still hoping they can move up into one of the top two NFC seeds. They need some help starting tomorrow night with the Vikings against the Packers. That's on ESPN. You can check that out tomorrow night. But on the flip side, the Titans need to win next week or have both the Steelers and the Colts lose in order for them to get the sixth seed in the AFC. After the game, Titans coach Mike Vrabel said, the approach here is that the playoffs have essentially already started for us. 
Interesting to note that the Titans couldn't stop Michael Thomas, but Dan Graziano stopped him for an interview. They've got the lowly Panthers next week. Stay healthy, and those Super Bowl dreams remain alive. Dan, thank you. Interesting for the Titans, too. You come off this sort of loss, and yet you, everything's still in front of you. It's unique. On the other side, for the Saints, here they are at 12-3. and three. Sean Payton wasn't happy with a lot of things that happened. You heard him in the postgame commentary. But you say it was a tale of two halves, and when it counted the most, they were there. Yeah, and I think that they're exactly right, and you're exactly right. And we think the Titans really, this game meant nothing, literally nothing to them. You know, they rested Derrick Henry, but everyone else pretty much, you know, went out there and, and put out a good effort. And then you look at what they did defensively. They were giving the Saints fits in the first half, and it was the kind of their blitz package that was issued. This is a three-man rush, and Derrick Robertson, Ends up with a sack on Drew Brees. Then they get into a situation later where they got guys standing up. It's just a four-man rush. The twist isn't handled properly by the Saints. But then in terms of the second half, yeah, here's a third and 12. They're bringing a corner blitz. They identify it perfectly. Alvin Kamara is there to pick up the corner. And then who do you go to? You go to Michael Thomas. And so I don't know what Sean Payton said at halftime, <laughs> but I will guarantee you something like, wait a second, you guys need to wake up because yeah. you didn't show up in the first half, especially on that offensive line. And then the second half was totally different. In fact, we saw it in the highlight, Zubin. The beginning of that second half was the big, you know, um, long Camara run, and he was untouched. Right. It was like, okay, here we go. Now this looks like the Saints offense we're used to seeing. You saw what Michael Thomas did in this game and what he has a chance to do in the next game to even move this record, as we said, out of touch. But you also saw the humility that he has in Crazy. his interview there with Dan Graziano. How badly would, a, would all 32 teams like to have a Michael Thomas on their team? Yeah, I think if you asked a lot of quarterbacks in private, like, okay, who's the best receiver in football? They maybe say, like, they maybe say Michael Thomas. Right. You know? Obviously, the production speaks for itself overwhelmingly. But then the fact that he comes with what appears to be no drama whatsoever. Zero. Yes, From zero. From wide receiver, that's I mean, unheard you. of. You're, that you're, level, you're right? surprised about it. That's why I'm you saying, say, really, yeah, let's yeah. talk about it, right? It's crazy. And the other thing that's crazy is that everybody knows he's getting the yeah, ball. Everybody. We, we, I think we talked about this last week. The, the next closest you know, leading receiver for the team coming into this week, I think was like Ted Ginn Jr. with like 28 receptions. <laughs> right. So it's like you know who they're throwing it to. People try to double him. I think, you know, I mean, we just, they can't, you know. The, and they and kudos to Sean Payton and Drew Brees for finding different ways to move him around and get him open. Yeah, glad he's getting the attention that he deserves through his play, not necessarily through other means. Uh, speaking of getting attention for how he's played, how about the upcoming MVP, and that is Lamar Jackson.